I would insist that everyone is treated with basic human dignity. And that if that's a privilege, that should be extended to everyone. And Stephen A. and I get into this on the radio some, uh, excuse me, on first week sometimes because, you know, he'll point to the process, for example, in Philadelphia. And I'll say, hey, the process was working. And then they blew it up because it was working. And Stephen A. will say, don't start me. It's like, and basically points to white privilege because a black coach, or GM rather, he said, would never be given five years. Hey, here's all this for five years to, to do whatever you want. And my point is, well, look, if race is a handicap in terms of using all the tools at your disposal to make the best possible team, then I wouldn't suggest that we admonish uh, white GMs not to do it. I'd say that that privilege, if it's such, should be extended to all GMs. Stephen A's talking about how it is. I'm talking about how I'd like it to be. Now, as it relates to Steve Nash, I don't know. I don't see that as privilege. I see it as a relationship, as Winston points out, between Steve Nash and KD. KD was very impressed with Steve Nash's basketball mind. And it's KD's team now. And in terms of the fit, in terms of the other star on the team, Kyrie Irving, who doesn't have the greatest reputation as a locker room guy, Steve Nash has a very good reputation in that regard. And Kyrie, if you want to criticize his actual basketball play, the ball sticks with him a bunch. You know, he really over dribbles. Very dribbles the same thing on Steve Nash. Relate to each other. They got handles, they can shoot. Pass. Kyrie's even more skilled than Steve Nash was. But maybe Nash can, you know, help impart some of the wisdom in terms of how to best deploy that those skills and also how to get along and lead teammates. That's something that Kyrie has not yet done is lead a group of guys to a championship. Rich and Queens, you're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Hey, Max, big fan of the first day yes. of the radio show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I, I guess, get your take on the upcoming series with the Rockets and the Lakers. Um, I know it seems like the favorite seems to be LeBron and, and AD, but if you look at the regular season, especially when the Rockets have been uh, going small ball, they defeated the Lakers twice, and it seems like the, everyone's are, everyone is getting caught up with the Lakers uh, having a gentleman's sweep with the Blazers, even though the Blazers' defense is like deplorable. And then you also look at the fact that James Harden has played two bad games in the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, series game two where the bench actually saved him and gave the uh, game seven where he just made one good play which was that defensive block against Thor who was like shooting like they were able to beat a good team you're right look this is what I'll say the Rockets are very live to beat the Lakers and the reason is the Lakers used all their resources bringing AD and they have nothing left so it's just LeBron and AD really and a bunch of guys now they cleared cap space they wanted to spend it on Kawhi Kawhi spurned the offer to compete against them with the Clippers, because Kawhi is that dude. And then they, they spent where they could, and they did a good job. You know, like, guys overperformed, like like Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee were the best versions of what they might have been. Danny Green is underperformed. but.